So I wasn't sure if I was going to make today's video, and if you've been following the channel for any period of time, you probably recognize that I have not posted a full self-driving beta video in about six months now. And to be honest, I've been really struggling with using the FSD beta. Um, and I think that kind of stems from two main factors. One being uh, I have an extremely low tolerance for error and also am trying to be very considerate of other drivers, not only their safety, but just also being considerate of other drivers on the road. And the second factor being the environment that I've been driving in uh, with my car. The FSD beta overall has been progressing very nicely over the last several months. They keep adding additional features and it does seem to be getting better in certain areas. However, I still find it extremely frustrating to use and this video today is really gonna illustrate that uh, through various different examples of semi-dangerous to downright dangerous situations that the car is putting me in and just other certain small edge case scenarios where it would just be easier for me to drive rather than rely on the FSD beta. And I recognize that you know this is a beta program. It's gonna make mistakes, it's still learning, it's very new, it's, it's practically in its infancy at this point, and it is our job to kind of work through it. Uh, however, at the end of the day, uh, I have a full-time job. Uh, when I'm going to and from work, I don't wanna be babysitting the car for the most part. I'm having a hard time uh, getting behind the FSD beta at this point point. That's not to say that there's been great work done here. Again, I just wanted to share this uh, with you all so you can kind of see what the current status is of things if you're just trying to casually use the FSD beta to and from work. So with that, we'll jump right into the footage. It is going to be an uncut drive, but I will speed through the less eventful portions. So starting off, I'm going to set my destination in the computer here, and we're just starting off in a parking lot. And the FSD beta still is not prepared to handle parking lots. It's really not something that it's been designed to do as of yet. So the car is going to struggle a little bit, but I do like to start it here just so you can see how the car performs in getting out of the parking spot. So you can see that the car is not going to engage FSD while in the parking spot. I do have to push it out a little bit and then the little steering wheel will appear on the screen letting me know that FSD beta can be turned on. So it's going to pull us out onto the road here and our first disengagement, which is about five seconds into the drive is there's a massive pothole on the right side of the road and the car is gonna put our front tire right through it. So rather than avoiding scuffing the rims, I am gonna take over at this point. So right here at this turn where the car is trying to merge onto the road, it is gonna approach the road at about a 45 degree angle. So traffic is coming up from our left and there is actually a car coming and the car seems to recognize it and starts to pull out, but it's way too slow. It's not aggressive enough. The other traffic is coming relatively quickly. So that's where you'll see me push the accelerator here. The camera shifts the frame to the left. So not a great start so far, a little bit frustrating in that regard. So the car's gonna handle this intersection fine. We get the green light and it moves through. You do see it move to the left a little bit in the intersection, but it maintains its lane position, so I have no complaints here. Now this is kind of a dangerous situation here. The car is trying to move into the left lane. It doesn't really recognize that the car you know, all the way on the left is also trying to move to the right. So I do take over at this point because there's traffic behind us and it's getting very confusing to other drivers. I will go ahead and uh, re-engage FSD and let the car take over control after we clear this next intersection. The rest of this highway portion is pretty uneventful. Uh, the car handles all of the intersections very nicely. We're maintaining a good lane position. We even have this car cross in front of us at the end here. In older builds of the FSD beta, the car would have slammed on the brakes at this point. It would have been jarring to everyone in the car. And if anyone was following us close behind, uh, they would have been put in risk of rear-ending us. However, uh, at this point, beta is really mapping nicely the trajectory of other cars in most cases crossing the road. So this was really cool here. The, we're in the middle lane and there is a car in the left lane that turns its blinker on. So it's hard to see in the video here, but it's at the very last second, um, the car turns its blinker on and then my car seems to recognize that and it moves into the right lane. And it actually displays a little message on the screen saying moving away from merge. 
so I'm not sure if it mapped that left lane as if it was a merge lane joining the highway, which would be inaccurate, or if it's actually labeling that that car is trying to move over. So I'm not sure if this is just a fluke uh, or something potentially a really nice feature that the car was able to recognize that blinker and move out of the vehicle's way so they could move over. It does make a mistake here, and this is not the car's fault, but the left lane is a left turn only lane for part of the day, and then switches back to being a straight lane only for the back half of the day. So it moves into the left lane just to pass slower moving traffic. I disengage it though, because I know that that left lane is a left turn only lane. So again, this is just something where the car is limited by its knowledge of the road, and I end up taking over just to correct it. Okay, so here's a really nice example of Pittsburgh drivers and their disregard for normal driving situations. So you can see I'm in the right lane here, I'm stopped at a red light. There's someone behind me who would like to make a right turn and rather than being patient and waiting, they decide to move into the left lane, cross in front of me and make the right into the shopping center on the right. So just a classic example of really great driving skills. Uh, this is something that uh, for, in this case, we're not moving, so it's not a big deal for the car. Uh, but if we were moving, this would be a situation where the car would probably definitely struggle with how to address this since the uh, other drivers are not following the law or conventional driving habits. Okay, so this is interesting here. The car in the lane in front of us is far to the right in terms of its lane positioning. So my car actually maps it as parked uh, inaccurately. So the light turns green and you see that now we're proceeding through the intersection as normal. We need to be in the right lane though. And this is actually a really good maneuver. The car is recognizing that it needs to be into the right lane. You can see on the screen that the car in our blind spot is marked blue, so it is tracking it. And the car does slow down on its own and then move into the right lane so it gets us in the right lane position to exit the highway. So we have an intersection up ahead. Uh, we do have a red light, so we are gonna stop here. And this will be our first protected left of the drive. So the light's gonna turn green and we'll proceed through the intersection. I'm always hyper vigilant of how close the car is getting to curbs. So in this case, it does a pretty nice job. It doesn't get too close to the edge there. You do see the wheel flick a little bit to the right to correct last minute. Uh, but for the most part, it takes that turn nicely. And now we are uh, heading into the northern part of Pittsburgh. And this is where the road situation is gonna get much more complicated. And you'll see some more examples of bad driving that the car has to deal with. So up ahead, we have someone in reverse that looks like they're gonna back right into the road. Don't really appear to be stopping. My car does see that and slows down a little bit, uh, but it eventually recognizes that they do stop as well and they're not gonna back directly into the road. Okay, so here is a left turn at a traffic light. We have oncoming traffic. This is the first very uncomfortable situation. The car seems like it's gonna go. It puts the wheel to the left. I take over last minute. The driver who is approaching me from the intersection puts their hands up in the air and is all flustered, uh, justifiably, because it did look like my car was gonna go. So th this is a classic example of where I really do not trust the FSD beta, and it's because of these type of situations uh, that happen, which are exactly like this, that really tempers my confidence in the system and makes me not want to use it. So the rest of the roadway here is pretty winding. It is getting closer and closer to Pittsburgh. So we're going to have some cars parked on the side of the road. At this intersection here, though, we need to be in the left lane. The car doesn't really recognize that or it's having a hard time plotting its course. You can see the guidance line in front of the car is kind of jumping back and forth. When we do eventually uh, get the green light here, you can see that my car puts its left turn signal on, which is gonna be confusing for other drivers behind us because we're in the wrong lane. There's no one behind me, so I was gonna see what the car ended up doing, um, but in this case, it was just easier to 
push the car through the intersection um, and it did eventually go straight through the intersection. I didn't have to disengage FSD, but it was just a bizarre situation where the car looked like it was trying to turn left and then ended up going straight. This is kind of a weird intersection though with how it is mapped here. So we've got lots of cars on the side of the road. We do a pretty good job keeping spacing around them. And then up here at the intersection, we come to a nice stop. And then we have a right turn at a stop sign here. The car handles this pretty well. I have no complaints about this. The car's looking to the left and tracking that there's no vehicles, so it does make the right turn accurately. So it's at this point that my camera stops recording, so we do have a bit of a, a skip in the sequence here. Um, but picking back up, we are back now in the northern part of Pittsburgh, crossing the Allegheny River. And as we get into Lawrenceville here, there's lots of people walking around, lots of traffic. so. Very uh, challenging situation for the FSD beta. And you can see our right turn here is pretty nice at the intersection. We are gonna struggle a lot uh, trying to make a right off of the road here. So we move nicely around the forerunner. And then as we're making the right turn, there is the pedestrian walking here. At this point, it did look like the beta was gonna go. It's tracking him on the road. So I end up taking over at this point, And then uh, this is where we're pretty much gonna wrap up the drive. Um, the car struggled with deciding when it was appropriate to make a right turn off the road. There was also cars behind me that were clearly getting frustrated with how slow we were moving. Again, just a, an example of how the situation probably was outpacing the capabilities of the car. But that's gonna bring us to the end of today's drive. And just for record keeping purposes, I was running software version 12.3.2 uh, on this drive. And uh, you know, I, I recognize that I have a very low tolerance for error and I'm not putting a lot of trust in the car. Uh, I think justifiably because of some of the interactions which I highlighted today in today's video. And uh, my goal is going forward to try and, and continue to utilize this software as much as I can. I really don't think I'm gonna be using it very much going to and from work, uh, but in other scenarios uh, when I'm not pressed for time or not uh, trying to create unneeded stress in my life, I will try to use it more just to get a good handle on the actual capabilities of the system. So I look forward to sharing that with you in the coming months and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, I do recognize that I'm, again, much less tolerant than some other beta testers that are putting up videos, but I think it's important that I share the good and the bad so you guys do have an idea, especially for the expansion which is currently uh, going on with the FSD beta and a lot more people are gonna be coming in shortly and have access to this software. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you in the next one.